Hello everyone, this is Pratima from Planet Physiology. In the earlier part, we have studied details about transport proteins in the cell membrane. In this session, we shall study various processes by which substance moves from one compartment to another compartment that is between intracellular and extracellular fluids. Based on energy utilized to move the substances, transport mechanisms across the cell membrane can be classified into two, passive and active transport. Passive transport mechanisms do not utilize any chemical or metabolic energy as they move the substances along the gradient that is from higher concentration to lower concentration or from high pressure to low pressure. In contrast, active transport utilizes metabolic energy to carry the substances across the cell membrane because they transport the substances against the gradient that is from low concentration to high concentration. Now let us study the various types of passive transport. Passive transport includes diffusion and osmosis. Now even though both are passive mechanisms, diffusion deals with transport of solutes whereas osmosis is concerned with movement of solvent molecules. As water is the predominant solvent in the body, osmosis is related to movement of water molecules. Diffusion can be further divided into two, simple and facilitated. Simple diffusion does not require help of any carrier protein. For facilitated diffusion, carrier protein is required. So diffusion with the help of carrier protein is called facilitated diffusion or carrier mediated diffusion. Now coming to the simple diffusion, simple diffusion can take place directly through the cell membrane as in case of lipid soluble substances like oxygen or carbon dioxide or it can occur through channel proteins. Channels are utilized by polar molecules that is water soluble substances. Based on the type of channel protein used, simple diffusion can be further subdivided as diffusion through leak channels. For example, diffusion of potassium or sodium through leak channels or it can be through voltage gated channels like diffusion of sodium through voltage gated sodium channels. It can be through ligand gated channels, for example, sodium diffusion through acetylcholine gated channels or diffusion can also take place through mechanosensitive channels, for example, calcium diffusion through stretch sensitive channels. As I mentioned earlier, facilitated diffusion requires carrier protein to transport the substances. Hence, it is also called as carrier mediated diffusion. Example is diffusion of glucose through GLUT that is glucose transporter. So here we have completed the types of diffusion across the cell membrane. We shall study details of diffusion as well as osmosis in separate videos. Okay, now coming to the active transport. As we have seen earlier, active transport moves substances against the gradient with the help of carrier protein and metabolic energy. If the carrier operates by directly using ATP or any other metabolic energy, it is termed as primary active transport. For example, sodium potassium pump. If the carrier moves substances by indirect use of metabolic energy, it is termed as secondary active transport. In this case, the concentration gradient created by primary active transport is utilized to move the another substance against the gradient. It can be further subdivided into co-transport and counter-transport. In co-transport, two or more substances are transported in the same direction. For example, sodium and glucose transport through SGLT, that is sodium glucose transporter. As the substances move in the same direction, co-transport is also known as symport. In counter-transport, which is also called as antiport, two or more substances move in opposite direction. For example, sodium-calcium exchange. The third type of active transport is 
vesicular transport in true sense it is not the transport across cell membrane because in this case substance does not cross the cell membrane instead the cell membrane surrounds the substance to be transported to form a vesicle and then the substance either enters the cell or leaves the cell if the substance enters the cell via vesicle it is known as endocytosis if the engulfed substance is liquid it is termed as pinocytosis and if the substance is solid it is known as phagocytosis if the substance leaves the cell via vesicle the process is called as exocytosis now many times a substance is picked up from one end of the cell by endocytosis and it is released from the other end by exocytosis in this case the process is called as transcytosis or cytopeptides it is commonly used to move the macromolecules across the cell for example transfer of antibodies across the placenta apart from these mechanisms substances are also transported across the endothelia or epithelia that is from one side of the epithelium to the other side say while crossing the capillary wall gastrointestinal tract renal tubules or other structures in the body in such cases epithelia possess tight junctions and different sets of transport proteins on their luminal and the basolateral surfaces such transport is called as transepithelial transport so shown in this diagram this represents the epithelial cells and these are the tight junctions this is the luminal border and this is the basolateral border now if the substances are transported through the cell it is called as transport via transcellular route sometimes substances do not enter the cell while crossing the epithelial sheet but they are directly transported through the intercellular space as you can see over here such transport is called as transport via paracellular route in some cases when the water is absorbed via paracellular route it drags solutes along with it such transport of solutes along with the water is called as solvent drag it is commonly seen in renal tubules while reabsorption so these were the various types of processes that transport the substances between the intracellular and the extracellular fluid or cross the epithelial borders let us quickly summarize the various transport mechanisms transport across cell membrane can be passive without use of metabolic energy or active by using metabolic energy passive transport includes diffusion of solutes and osmosis of water diffusion can be simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion simple diffusion can take place directly through the cell membrane as for lipid soluble substances or it can be through channels for water soluble substances diffusion can take place through leak channels voltage gated channels ligand gated channels or mechanosensitive channels active transport can be primary active if it directly utilizes metabolic energy or it can be secondary active if the process uses metabolic energy indirectly secondary active transport can be of two types co transport and counter transport the third type of active transport is vesicular transport where substances move via vesicles it can be endocytosis exocytosis or transcytosis endocytosis can be pinocytosis or phagocytosis other transport mechanisms include transepithelial that occurs across the epithelia it can take place via transcellular or paracellular route and the last type of the solute transport is solvent drag so if you get a two mark question on the classification of transport mechanisms across cell membrane this flow chart or a mind map will be sufficient so that's all about the classification of transport mechanisms in the next part we shall study diffusion in detail thank you if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon 
Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.